Hey, what's up, you guys? Whether well, it's your first time with us or you've been with us for every single episode, welcome to the Players Club Podcast, a podcast about the players, for the people, and I'm your host, Gary and Richard. Yeah, welcome. Episode 19. It's crazy we're at 19 episodes already, but thank you guys for all the support you've been giving us every episode, every single week. Um, it's been a great start to 2022 with all the guests that's come on to the show. But this week, we got a really special guest coming on. If you're a college football fan, you're a football fan, definitely you're a Clemson fan, you're going to love this guest this week. He's literally been at every stage, at the pinnacle of every part that you could be in this game of football, from being a five-star recruit uh, to being a first-round draft pick to now coaching at one of the most premier schools in the country. Uh, so we got my really good friend, my big brother, my former running backs coach, like all in one. Uh, we got my man CJ Spiller coming on to the podcast, joining us here, here in a few. Uh, looking forward to that conversation. We're going to talk about everything. He's had so much to offer just because of all his experiences. So you guys going to be in for a treat. Before we get there, we're going to talk about this is a big week in the football world because it's combine week. So a lot of my friends, uh, a lot of guys who are trying to chase this NFL dream as well are in Indianapolis right now uh, getting ready to be interviewed getting ready to test your 40, your broad jump, your vertical, um, the L drill, the three cone drill, uh, do a lot of position drills just to see who is worth investing money into. And so it's a big, big week. And um, I'll have that same similar experience in pro day with a lot of other guys across the country here in a few weeks. Uh, but yeah, the combine's huge. It's going to be interesting to see what guys kind of make their mark or don't make their mark. It's definitely a lot of eyes on people. Um, and so, yeah, looking, looking forward to watching on TV, Seeing a lot of my friends I train with, hopefully I'm just praying, especially the guys I train with, hopefully they don't forget things because sometimes in moments like that, the pressure is just so immense. You forget all the little details that you've learned the past weeks of training and lifting. Everything sometimes just goes out, goes out your mind. You just lose it. And so I'm, I'm hoping for my guys, they bring it together, uh, remember everything they learned and put it to work and execute and go make some money. But all the same, um, with a combine coming up, and the draft, we got a really good guest on to talk about all those things, his his process through that. Coming up next, uh, we got a Hall of Fame college football player, uh, former first round pick, former five star recruit, uh, now uh, the running backs coach at Clemson University, a great school, obviously. Um, but yeah, coming up next, we got CJ Spiller. Yo, all right, welcome. Like we talked about earlier, I got one of my, my good friends, my former coach, uh, big brother, all in one, come on to the podcast. Um, just, uh, I gotta I gotta hype him up a little bit. We're joined by one of the greatest Clemson players to come through, a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, and newly appointed running backs to the best university in all the land, Clemson University. Uh, CJ Spiller, what's good? Man, what's going on, Rich Dog, man? Hey. <laughs> Hey, the introduction, man, I need to have you go with me every time I go speak. That's pretty good. Short and sweet, man. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Precise, right to the point. Give, give them just enough. Just yeah, enough. you just give them enough. Just enough. Yeah, all right. So I want to start off with this. Uh, we had both our former, our former coach, uh, Coach Sweeney, on the podcast recently and said he had no thoughts about being a coach before he was offered his first job. When did you start thinking about being a coach? Uh, honestly, uh, so while I was playing, I used to help out with this uh, Lib with Liberty High School track team here in South Carolina. Uh, my wife, that's the high school that she went to, and it kind of started off as like a volunteer. Hey, can you just come help the sprinters out, kind of give them some knowledge and kind of, you know, share your things and what you've done while you was – because they know I ran track as well. Um, so right. I did that for like a year, and then the next year it kind of turned into – all right, you're going to be the sprint coach, you know, an unpaid sprint coach, which was cool with me uh, because I just love giving back to the community, just love seeing, you know, young people go off and be successful. And honestly, that's kind of where that itch started for me. It's like, man, this is the my calling, my purpose for life uh, because you never really know when that time is going to come with, what's your calling or what's your purpose in life. Uh, but when I started helping out with that track team, that was when I really figured out, all right, man, this is this is what I'm called to do is to to help young people try to go off and be successful and to kind of open their eyes to the bigger picture than what they're in right now at that moment. So that's where it started at for me, uh, just getting that itch. And, you know, coach used to always, you know, tease me while I was playing, hey, if you ever want to get into right. coaching, just let me know. You know, hopefully, you know, I bring you on and, you know, you kind of come learn and, you know, see if it's something that you truly want to do and the opportunity presented itself. 
Yeah, well, so walk the people like so. I was kind of I got the first hand. I remember you were just I was like, oh, well, my boy back. He just sitting in the back chilling. <laughs> I didn't know what you was doing. I, you was taking a year off from training, and yeah. so walk the people through kind of the process from when uh, you stopped playing, and then you're like, all right, I'm gonna do this thing for real. Yeah, so my last year was 17 playing, and you know it was one of those years where I was kind of going off and on with Kansas City, and you know, and I had been very fortunate enough and very blessed enough where you know I didn't want to be one of those guys that's just bouncing around just to be bouncing around. You know, I had a, a young daughter. I still have a young daughter. And, you know, I, if I felt like I was going to do that, I'd rather just spend time with her and, you know, get those daddy and daughter moments uh, that that's going to last a lifetime. Um, so once I got done playing officially, you know, uh, I told Coach Hay, man, I, you know, you know, remember those conversations that we used to have about, you know, me coming on or me trying to figure out, you know, if I want to dip, get into coaching. Uh, we was right here at my house. We had just finished up a luncheon uh, with a couple. Uh, from his All In event that we had done uh, the previous year, and I was like, "Hey, I think I'm gonna uh, get back into the master's program because I always wanted to go back to school anyway, just further my yeah. education, uh, just to try to stay st- sharp in that." And I was like, "Hey, I think I'm gonna get back into this master's program, uh, athletic leadership." They're like, "Oh, really?" They're like, "Well, if you do that, you know, uh, you know, you can come and you know be an unpaid GA, I guess you call it, and uh, <laughs> just kind of sit in on meetings and kind of see if this." If coaching is something that you want to do, kind of see if this is something that you truly want to do. And I was like, oh, really? So that's kind of how those conversations went. And as you say, I used to just come and sit in the back and really observe. I think, you know, that's one of the biggest things that I really try to do, just observe and really just interject when I need to interject uh, with certain stuff and just try to, you know, give my knowledge to young guys, especially running backs uh, that, that, right. that, that that want to go off and play at the next level. Uh, so that's kind of what I was doing, sitting back, taking notes. I was just another set of eyes. But at the same time, just learning different personalities uh, throughout the room, just learning how Coach Elliott, you know, manage the room, manage each individual. And, uh, you know, I always tell people, man, I'm so grateful for him uh, for opening up the doors because a lot of times a lot of coaches will feel threatened or they'll feel, you know, oh, man, I got this guy, you know, played here and he's trying to, you know, trying to right. take everything that I got. But, man, he was very open arms, you know, kind of like a like a big brother, honestly. You know, taught me everything answer any questions that I had, you know, was always, you know, making sure that I was involved. You know, he really just wanted me to just come in, just sit and just, you know, soak up knowledge, really. Before you became my running backs coach, we had a couple of classes together. Yeah. And so that was, <laughs> uh, so that was, that was a good time. And then I think one, you, you kind of alluded to something that I think, man, if people, anybody who knows you, people don't know you, I think one of the coolest things was seeing, like you do have a big name, big presence about how humble you were through that whole process. It was cool to see it and like inspire like a lot of us in the rooms. Like, All right, but if you can do that, like you know what I'm saying, who are we to like to think we got the big head? And so, but now now you're officially a coach and you just finished like I guess this is your second recruiting or your first actual recruiting? This is actually this is like my first actual recruiting because obviously we had the pandemic year. So this is actually my first year that I actually was able to go on the road. You know, last the previous year it was sitting in the office making phone calls, looking at film. But it was this, uh, this past year, I was actually able to go and get on the road, you know, go and meet people, meet different, you know, coaches, see different prospects. So that was, it was a very unique uh, experience for me, something that I, that I was looking forward to him because I just love being around people. I think you get a better gauge when you kind of go and have a face-to-face sit down with an individual instead of being right. over the phone. Yeah, I want to ask you, because I mean, all right, so people that don't know, you are a former big-time recruit. How much has like recruiting changed from when you were getting recruited to go to college? And like you recruiting kids now. Yeah, I mean, the whole landscape that changed, honestly. I mean, because, you know, when I was coming out, I mean, you didn't hear about kids having like trainers and, you know, these personal people that you have to talk to and all that stuff. I mean, it was really just a high school coach that college coaches came and talked to and then your parents. That was it. But now, I mean, you have to deal with, you know, trainers, you know, uh, <laughs> the legal guardians, uh, the girlfriends. I mean, the whole nine yards and, you know, especially with the way – College football is going. It's just a whole different uh, landscape and stuff that you have to just take into account. And the really biggest thing for me is you have to really just learn the rules. I mean, because as you go through recruiting, you really don't know the rules. Uh, but now I've been on the other side of it. You, the biggest thing is just learning the rules, knowing what you can do, what you can't do. Uh, so that was a big adjustment for me because, you know, you go and you know you can't talk to a kid. So it's an awkward moment because they see you and they want to talk to you. But you're like, <laughs> no, nah, I can't talk to you because of the rules. So it was it was different, uh, especially being down, going and recruiting down in the state of Florida. Yeah, that's kind of a perfect segue. So um, the Clemson fans, obviously, they know your story, but then just people are watching. So you were 
a Florida kid through and through. Uh, yeah. People thought you were going to go to Florida or Florida State. How did you get out of Florida? Uh, honestly, I mean, I mean, the story is like I had five official visits that, you know, is, is very normal for a, a prospect coming out of high school. And ironically, uh, my high school coach, uh, Andrew Zhao, he attended the University of Alabama. So, you know, we always had, you know, that communication. And, you know, I just called him one day because I had just took, I was getting ready to set up my visits. And I just called him. I was like, hey, man, do you think Alabama, you know, what's their deal? Are they going to recruit me? Like, are they really trying to get me? Or are they just, you know, playing the fence? And, you know, so he reached out to the people that over at Alabama and kind of got some inside information for me. And, you know, he got back to me. and was like, hey, they ain't they recruiting, but they ain't really feeling. So I was like, all right, well, you know, my high school teammate, Kevin Alexander, he was already committed to Clemson. So I always seen Coach Sweeney when he came through and I always, you know, Kevin always talked about Clemson. So I was like, all right. So I was like, you know, I got one visit. I was like, man, I'll just, I'll just go to Clemson. And, you know, ironically, you know, Coach, I guess he thought I was joking around, you know, but so he made me find uh, sound like this little business, little coach's card, business card, if you want to call it, that, hey, I will attend Clemson on an official visit on such and such date. <laughs> So I had to sign it. One of my teammates, Mathis Jackson, had to sign it and coach signed it uh, because, I mean, I guess he was just in shock that, you know, a, a kid of my caliber would take a visit to Clemson. But, you know, I just felt like, you know, hey, if my teammates committed, there must be something special about this place. So, you know, what's the worst case scenario? If, it, if, if I don't like it, I still have some other schools to choose from that's, that's top notch. Uh, so I just came up here on a visit, man, honestly. And uh, it was after I had got done with my University of Florida visit and, you know, this was the only visit where I called back home and told my mom, hey, I think this is a place I can be for three or four years. And I, I mean, I had to been down to Miami. I had to been out to the real USC out in Southern Cal. I had to been uh, to Florida, coming from Florida. I still had my Florida State visit, but, you know, I grew up, everybody knew I grew up an FSU fan, so I stayed in Tallahassee more than I stayed in Gainesville, honestly, for games and stuff like that. So I knew a lot about that program, but I was still going to take a visit. So I just came up here, and it was just something different. You know, it was the people. Uh, that was just so generous. And then I just remember James Davis and uh, Jacoby Ford staying back. It was, matter of fact, it was Martin Luther King uh, weekend uh, because uh, the university was out uh, for the holiday. And those guys stayed back and hosted me on my visit. And we kind of just chilled right there in the old Thornhill where they stayed, where the, where the players used to stay at. And we kind of just, could say, had like a little house party. Man, that's crazy. I didn't, I, I've heard, I feel like I didn't sit through many meetings and heard all the CJ Spiller stories, but I ain't never heard the business card story. Yeah, man. I, yeah. yeah, yeah. He made it, man. He, he still like if you go in his office, I, he still has that little card on his office to the day. Like he literally made me sign that card just because you know a lot of people just didn't really think that you know that I would come on a visit. Honestly, uh, I don't know what it was about people that made people think that, but you know, uh, I always was you know raised was that if you give somebody your word, you stick to it. And you know, I had guy coach my word that I would come on, on my visit because. You know, I knew what I was looking for. You know, I wasn't been trying wasn't trying to go see every place. You know, I, I had honed in on what, what I was looking for in the, in, in the college decision. One of the things, I mean, he said it's in team meetings. He said it in press conferences. He's always says like, all right, if CJ Spiller don't come here to Clemson, I'm probably not here. When you hear those words, what what do you think of? Man, it's it's really surreal just to to sit back and to hear those words honestly, because you just never know how things will play out and. You know, uh, I know, you know, my name's always, you know, probably head like when it comes to stuff. But really, when I came here, man, it was just about me and my teammates trying to just do something special. Um, we had, I, I, mean, I took it upon myself to kind of dig into the history of Clemson football and kind of see where it was and what it was, you know, what it was trying to do. And you know, at the time we hadn't won the ACC, hadn't been to an ACC in forever. And we trying to, we wanted to change that story and let people know, hey, man, you can come to Clemson to be successful. So. When I hear him say that, man, it, it just it really just gave me chills, honestly, you know, uh, throughout my body and just, you know, make the, the hairs on the back of my neck just stand up because, you know, you just never know the impact that you can have, how one person can really have a huge impact on the university. But to me, it was a it was a collective effort from everybody uh, in that in that 06 signing class. Obviously, you got just got named to a Hall of Fame uh, career for a college football player. When you think about your college career, like, what was your mentality coming into Clemson? Uh, I think I just really just took what how I was raised. I mean, just wanted to just come in and work hard. And, that, and, you know, that was the big thing when I signed with Clemson because James Davis was just coming off a freshman All-American season. You know, and that's the thing that I tell kids before I got into coaching and what I tell kids now that I'm into coaching. 
It don't matter where you're going to go. It's going to be competition. If you're scared of competition, then you're not going to make it. This is not the sport for you. So when I sign here, people's like, man, you going to Clemson? I mean, they just had a freshman All-American. I'm like, well, the University of Florida got first, had All-Americans. Florida State got All-Americans. Miami got All-Americans. USC, everybody know the, the history of that, that program. They had All-Americans. So to me, it's just all about just coming in and competing. That's what I want to do. I want to earn this respect of my teammates. Because, you know, as you know, being a former player in college, I mean, when you step on campus, man, they want to know, hey, is, is this guy really that – is he really that five-star guy? Is, is it really right. true what we see on film? So, to me, it was just all about just coming in and establishing myself and, and just earning the respect of my teammates. And I think I've done that. I think we had a, we had a great uh, group of seniors that year, you know, headed by, you know, Anthony Waters. And he kind of just took me up under my wing and kind of just really just showed me, you know, the ropes of how to be a, a college uh, – a college athlete. Yeah, I mean, that's like, I think you you hit it on the head. And then just um, obviously had a lot of great moments, a lot of big plays. Uh, and people would probably be like, oh, this this play should be, this game should be. When you think about your college career, which game, we're going to do game first, which game, if you could pick one game, would you pick? I would probably say the Virginia game in 09 when we clinched the division, you know, uh, to and then plus for that to be you know my last game ever in Death Valley and for us to clinch that division something that we set out to do uh, as freshmen when we stepped on campus and for now for that to become a reality man that was a uh, surreal moment uh, for all of us so I would probably say that Virginia game in 09 when we clinched to to go and play in the ACC championship game down in Tampa against Georgia Tech it's a big game all right next one is. All right, biggest play. So you're, you're well, I'm gonna say biggest play. Your favorite play in your career in college? Oh, uh, my favorite play in my career in college. Oh man, I, I mean it has to be ball. Everybody think I'm gonna say Georgia Tech because that's that's what the, I thought you were gonna say. <laughs> you know that's the iconic one. But if, when you really look at, it, if you truly study, you know the the history of my career. If you go back and watch the Boston College game, my freshman year. It's the exact same move I've done against Boston College that I did against Georgia Tech. Except for this time against Boston College, I cut across the whole field instead of just standing up the sideline. So I would say Boston College because that was my first career touchdown. It was, I mean, literally the same as that play, a swing route, uh, same, yeah. you know, like like a sneak play and, you know, caught the little screen. It was third down and Will Proctor was the same quarterback, you know, for the Georgia Tech that, that was for uh, Boston College and, Man, to to make guys miss and to to score, that was kind of like that moment. You know, it's like, oh, I can play at I'm this here. level. Yeah, I, I can play at this level because you never yeah. know. Because everybody, all right, we seen him doing that. You know, little league and middle school and high school. Let's see if he can do it on this level. I want to ask you, so Clemson fans, uh, probably any, honestly, any college football fans will remember this. Tell us about Thunder and Lightning. Oh man, that was that. That was. I mean, you got to go back to the Georgia Tech game. I mean, that was when you know, man, Georgia. Had George Tech coming in. Obviously, James, he's from Atlanta. So, you know, he's hyped up throughout the whole week. I'm trying to keep him calm at practice. Hey, man, just stay calm. It's a night game, college game day here. So I'm just trying to just keep him calm as possible. And just let him know I got his back uh, because I knew how much that game meant to him because it's the same thing. You know, it's like for you. Like if you used to, you know, be at a different school and you come play a, a Clemson, you're going to want to showcase. You're going to want to, you know, want your teammates to have your back to go out there and put their best foot forward. And to me, I just told them, hey, man, I'm going to give you everything I got tonight. You know, I know how much this game means to you. It's a national vibes television game. And you got a lot of people up here at the game. going to have a lot of people watching. I just want you to know I got your back out here tonight. And uh, he was like, oh, that's all I need to know then. And then he was just ready to roll. But, man, we just complimented each other so well. You know, James was obviously a, a very powerful back, but he had enough speed to, to, to take it the distance if he needed to. And, you bring me in, I'm more the slasher, the, the quickness, and then have the speed to to get around the edge and take it the distance uh, anywhere on the field. So we just complement each other. And the biggest thing for us is we always pushed each other, honestly. You know, yeah. during games, if I felt like James wasn't doing, wasn't playing up to the standard, I'll let him know. And then it was vice versa. He, if he felt like I wasn't playing up to the standard, he'll let me know. But I think that's kind of why it kept us, you know, sharp. And that's why it always kept us, you know, Want to be great because we knew the other person was going to hold us to that standard. And then, you know, you had the OG and Reggie Mayweather, who was a senior at the time. And he just really, he kept the glue together, honestly. I mean, I know me and James was the, the, the headlights, but man, Reggie Mayweather, he kept the glue because he was that, that, that senior leadership that we needed, how to keep everything calm, 
man, he instilled confidence uh, in us. Man, I mean, he just taught us a lot about, you know, what it means to how to play the game and how to control your emotions throughout the game. So, man, he get a lot of credit to as well, you know, even though his name not as mentioned as much. But, man, without Reggie, there's probably no thunder and lightning because he kept us too very uh, level-headed. level-headed. Yeah, big praise. Uh, Reggie's good people. All right, so, um, no, nah, it's, it's cool to hear. I think a lot of people would think about it, that Clemson era, thunder and lightning was yeah. a big deal. So it's cool to hit a behind the scenes. But then you go, all right, so you go on have, you had a great college career. Uh, you did it, you did it all. You should have won a Heisman, but whatever. You know, I'm, still, uh, yeah, I'm, still, I'm still mad at the voters about that, but it is all good, man. <laughs> my, boy, my boy Mark Ingram, he had a good year too, so he, he pulled it out, but I'm still a little salty about it. Yeah, if you had that season in today's Clemson world, you win a husband. I'm just going. That, that's that's my pers- my personal take. Well, Clemson won the Clemson like it is now. If you had that season right now, like if Will Shipley go had a season next year, he gonna win a husband. Yeah, yeah. So ho- hopefully you have one of those seasons, man. We get him up there. <laughs> we we overdo Heisman voters. We need a we need a winner now. Come on. No doubt, no doubt. Um, all right, so a lot of college guys uh, just that leaving school or getting ready to go into the draft and do the whole process. Go to the combine. When you when you think back on the combine and the draft process, what comes to your mind? Man, I just, I think about those interviews when I went up there to Indianapolis and just had to sit down in front of all these executives with head coaches, GMs, coordinators. I mean, I think about just I mean, you got like ten minutes for each session to go and try to you know sell yourself to this to this organization. It's vice versa, right? So. Coming out, you know, coming into college, you know, college is trying to, you know, sell their program to you. Now for the NFL, it's vice versa. You're trying to sell yourself to an organization or why they should pick you with a high draft pick. Uh, but to me, it was just, you know, all about the preparation. Um, and, it, and it was fun uh, getting to meet new people. I mean, because obviously you're, you're, foot, when you're a football junkie, you follow the NFL on Sundays. And now you have an opportunity to sit down with some of these, uh, these head coaches, these legendary head coaches. And, kind of get the chance to let them pick your brain and you get to pick their brain. But I would say the interviews was the interesting part coming out uh, because, you know, you, you prepare for it, but you really don't know it until you get in there and, you got, right. and, you're not, and you're on that hot seat. <laughs> you know, that thing, get a little, <laughs> it get a little sweaty in there. So you just got to be on your P's and Q's. But if you just have fun with it, just be yourself and trust the, trust the preparation, you'll be fine. Yeah, that's kind of one of the biggest things. We, we got the interview prep things we're yeah. going through here, getting guys ready to go uh, for the combine, even pro day. Cause they're gonna ask you everything. Yeah. And, and, and they and they trying to take money out your pocket. Yeah, without a doubt. They they trying to take money out your pocket. And one of the stories that I always think about is when uh my high school guidance counselor, uh Miss Debbie Stevenson, she actually told me a NFL team called her and asked about me. Like how was how was I a student in high school? So like they doing they doing their research. I mean, when you think about yeah. it though, honestly, when the team get ready to invest millions of dollars into you why wouldn't you do your home your homework and your research so for them to go all the way back to my high school man that, that was that was really eye-opening so that's so when i know that so i try to get that to to young guys that's getting ready to come out now young players man hey man these teams are they they're gonna do their homework so when you go and sit down with them just be truthful even if they all know you you better make sure that they know when you get up out that seat because if they find out that you was telling one it might hurt your stock a little bit so Man, it's just all about this going to be truthful. Don't 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 be ashamed of who you are, man. Just put everything on the table and see where the chips fall. And, and that's kind of what I've done. Draft night, uh, you get you get picked top ten. How what was that feeling like? Man, the, the to be in that green room was a was a special moment. Uh, because I mean, as you know, you know, you you grow up watching the NFL draft and just praying to one day hopefully have that opportunity. And for me to to actually be sitting in that green room, it was like, wow, man, this is this is what I was watching as a little kid. Now I'm here with my family and my friends. And, you know, my daughter was young at the time. She was like three or four years old at the time. So, you know, to share that moment with her was very special uh, for me. Uh, and then to share it with my with my mom, um, man, it was it was just a surreal moment. But really the biggest one, part for me, honestly, that out of the whole that whole night was riding in the car with Barry Sanders. I mean, having an opportunity to sit huh. there with a Hall of Famer, a guy that you that I grew up watching, trying to make my moves after, and I'm sitting here three feet apart from him, having an opportunity to pick his brain about 
you know, certain things. How did he take care of his body? You know, how did you, you know, approach the game week in and week out? So for that little car ride, man, to, to sit there with, with Barry, man, that's that's a memory that's going to last me a lifetime. And Barry might don't don't remember, but I'm going to always remember <laughs> having that having that car ride with him, man, and just and just talking to him and just being memorized by, like, man, this is actually Barry Sanders, like a dude I actually watch on TV. I'm actually sitting here in the car with him, and we sitting here having a, a great conversation. No, that's, that is crazy. He's uh, arguably best running back of all time. So of all time? Is, yeah. No, nah, he's legendary. Um, all right, so you get picked. Uh, you go top 10. And you grew up in Florida. You went to school in South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> how was it? How was the transition going to Buffalo? Oh, that was some cold weather up there, I tell you. <laughs> uh, but honestly, I tell people all the time, though, Outside of the weather, which is what make Buffalo, Buffalo is very similar to my hometown in Florida, Lake Butler, and Clemson. It's a very small blue collar town, and they just love it. They got probably the one of the best fan bases in the entire NFL. I mean, Bills Mafia, they're going to come support you, win, lose. They're going to be on the road. I mean, that's probably one of the favorite places that I ever lived throughout my whole career playing in the NFL. I mean, like I said, you had to get adjusted. It took me like a year or two years to get adjusted to the cold just because, I mean, for us, when we think cold, we're like, okay, cold. It can't get no colder than this. But, man, when you go up there to, to the north, that's a different type. That's bone-chilling cold. Uh, and, you know, I, I'll never forget my rookie year. We were playing New England the last game of the season. We all know it's cold in Massachusetts. Man, their players on the field saying, man, we cannot wait for this game to end because it's too cold out here to be playing. I knew right then uh, this, this too cold up here. Uh, but it was fun, though, man, because you get an opportunity also to see the season change throughout the year. I mean, so to be able to see all four seasons change, man, that's something you see in the movie. So to not be able to see it in person, yeah. it was it was fun. Uh, but, man, Buffalo was a – it was one of my favorite places I ever lived, man. I, I, I love going – I love playing up there in front of that fan base. And, and just the people up there was just very generous. Like, you know how it is. You, come up, you go out, you know, people speak to you, but they wasn't – you no know, bombarding you, so they let you enjoy your meal, yeah. let you enjoy your time with your family. So that's that's one thing. And then I was able to save money because there's nothing to do in Buffalo, honestly. Uh, well, you, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so you know, but that what made our team so special because we was able to have that camaraderie and come together because we always hung out with each other. Uh, you know, so that that's that's the one special place that you know I love to go back to visit just because of you know the people that's up there. You like a prime like prime example of like a kind of experience in this is like. It's going from playing to coaching. Mm -hmm. And it's probably a lot of people want to do what you've done. What do you feel like the biggest challenge of going from being a, a, a like a going from being a player to now being a position coach? Uh well, I mean, just like you know, like we talked about uh, <clears throat> when I first took over, man, is you know, people have this perception of me as a player, right? So they're gonna have those same expectations for me as a coach. But the thing that, you know, I'm very self aware, man. I'm a I'm a young coach. I just finished my first season. As a, as a coach, you know, so there's so much more that I have to learn about the coaching world. And I think if you have the right perspective and the right mind, uh, open mind, uh, when you come into it, uh, I think you can be successful. Now, if you get into this thing and you'd have been a great player, you think you're going to know it all, you're going to be fooling yourself. So I think you just have to come come in when you first start off, man, and just learn and then just talk to people that have been there. So for me, you know, a, a guy, for example, is Coach McCorvey. I mean, here you got, you know, one of the OG. best coaches to ever that knows everybody right here at your disposal. Man, I'm always asking him questions because I never want to get to the point where I think I know it all. Even though I done played the position, I know it pretty well. He done coached the position. He done been around great backs. I mean, I'm still always trying to find ways to get better to, to help myself and then also help my help my segment room. So it's just all about just having that open mind and not thinking that, hey, just because, you know, you done had this great – you know, career as a as a player that it just automatically just trans over. Yeah, you take some of the stuff that you've done as a player into your coaching life, but you got to understand, man. You start, you got to build that foundation just like you did as a player, and just see and see the beautiful house that you can build. Uh, but you got to have an open mind to it, though. No, no doubt. I think you, and I think you've done you've done that really well. Because I mean, like you said, like we, like people know, I mean, you could have you could have you could have walked into your role very differently. I feel like you've been humble about it, and. I thought you got you got you had a really good room for your first year too. It was a little yeah yeah yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. going on. But when, yeah. it, when, it, when it all finished out, I feel like <laughs> our running back room this past year was pretty solid. 
Yeah, it was, man. It, honestly, man, it was it was one of the best experiences, one, one some of the most fun I ever had. Uh, because you, you, like you say, you having to figure out different personalities. You know, you got to figure out what push buttons you can pick, uh, push uh, within each person, and then just managing. But at the same time, you have to be true to yourself, and that's really all I ever wanted to do. I just wanted to be authentic and true to myself, uh, and then I kind of just went from there. Uh, but man, I, I thank Coach Elliott all the time. I, I probably need to send him a thank you note today for Will Shipley <laughs> and Phil Murphy and Kobe Pace. You know, so. I, I don't I don't think I don't I don't look at it like oh man oh I I, I got those guys man that was that was Coach Elliott man that done a, a tremendous job recruiting those guys now he kind of just up passed that I'm just trying to carry that torch on that he up passed on to me to 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 make sure that these guys fulfill what he already had to set in stone for them for their college career so trust me I I don't look back and, and say oh man. I, I, I I I ain't say I struck gold, but boy, I'm sure digging for it. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Um, all right, last one, and we got a couple of, like quick hitters. And we'll use for something else. All right, so all right. Coach Spiller for the for 22, 2022 season coming up. How do you feel about you? You kind of seen seen a glimpse of it, but the impressions of this next year's team coming oh, off the man. year we just had, and then obviously yeah. like going into everything. Like, what's your what's your first impressions of this, this year's team? Uh, well, man, I mean, this is, I think this is a team that's, that's going to be hungry. Uh, I think a team that's going to have a, a great appreciation uh, for winning. Uh, I think, you know, a, a team that's that's going to know exactly what it takes to win week in and week out. And, you know, as you know, man, each and every week you're going to get everybody's best shot. And you no have doubt. to approach it just like that. I mean, it's a, it's a game seven each Saturday. And, and anybody can be beat. So if you don't go out there and take care of your business, man, you can go be beat. Because my mindset has always been is that other teams have coaches too. You know, they stay up in the office late too. They trying to put up game plans late too. So how can we have an edge on them? What, what can we find an edge to make sure that we can get over the hump? So well, I think this team has that edge to them. I think, you know, having the season that we had last year, that kind of that kind of put that little that, uh, that reunited that fire in that belly. I think amongst the whole organization, and I think, uh, man, we we, we poised for a, a great season, but we know there's a lot of work ahead that has to be put in to hopefully live in a beautiful house that we want to live in. Man, this has been uh, another one of my. I guess I, I say every week it's one of my favorite episodes because every week I feel like I enjoy it more and it just gets better. But it's been good to have he really all of the above, big bro, good friend, my former coach. Uh, and then Clemson legend to have CJ Spiller on. I'm gonna say college football legend, just more than Clemson legend. Uh, CJ Spiller on. So, bro, I appreciate you for coming on to the podcast. It means a lot. Oh uh, man, appreciate you having me on, man. You just thank God, tell you, man. Just keep doing you, uh, man. Keep being you. Keep keep growing your platform, using your platform to reach so many people. Your, your future's so bright. You never know, you know what what your future holds, man. Just take it one day at a time and. Once you get that calling on your life, man, you, you just take full steam ahead. You, you, just like I talked about in our meeting rooms all the time, you put them horse blinders on and you just go to work. And, no and doubt. like I said, you got, you got a long career ahead of you. And appreciate you for having me on, my man. Nah, I appreciate you. Hey, look, you guys see why I had so much fun my last year. Um, I had Coach Elliott for five years, and then I got transitioned to another great coach, uh, but y'all can see our relationship. My man is hilarious. You talk about, he talked about the end being comfortable in his own skin. As you can see, my man showed up on the podcast with his daughter's pink headphones and self-explanatory. My man is, is very confident who he is. And man, he's a really good dude. And so hopefully through this podcast, you got to see more of uh, who the legend CJ Spiller is, man. Really good people, super humble, super funny. We had so many times in our running back room, we would just be cracking up, cracking jokes. Uh, and then at the same time, he's super insightful. I think as much as he was a great player, you can see like the wisdom he gave to us on a daily basis, just all the, the game he was able to give us, like on how to play, how to make it, how to stay. Um, and so, man, I'm just thankful. Uh, one, he came to Clemson because I watched him growing up. And so it was to, the whole process of him becoming my coach and then me getting to Clemson, me earning his respect, and then him becoming my coach was also surreal for me. Uh, because he was a legend uh, where I'm from growing up. It's like I'm from the area of Clemson and to watch him like kind of become the superstar he is, go into the league and then come back as it was always just kind of cool. And so, yeah, 
I keep saying it, this is my favorite episode. This was definitely one of my favorite episodes. Cause y'all gotta think here, I'm I'm about to be turning to my own like little, like I guess fanboy moment he had with Barry Sanders. Y'all gotta think, bro, I grew up a Clemson fan. Like war, you know what I'm saying? I was running around, I'm trying to make moves like CJ Spiller and James Davis. We used to go to his games. And then when I'm coming up as a recruit and then get on a team, he will always come back. I'm like, why he finally learned my name? I was like, that's rich. We used to dab each other up and have all these moments. And so then he became my coach. And then it was like, I was a senior leadership in the room and we became good friends as my guy. And so full circle moment for me is little old Clemson fan Darian will have a podcast and however many years that uh, years later, and I got CJ Spiller here on my podcast. Look, I had my own moment today. So um, yeah, man, look, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to share my own stories, tidbits. Uh, but I had a really, a really great episode. And so I uh, hopefully you guys did too. And so like we always say, man, hey, thank you guys for showing so much love and support to the podcast. Uh, we're going to continue to try to get good guests on, put out good content. Uh, what I need from you guys, if you're loving it, let us know you're loving it. You know what I'm saying? Comment back, uh, subscribe. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers. So maybe by the time we put this video out, but definitely after we put this video out, let's hit 3K. Like we're all in this together. Let's hit 3,000 subscribers. Um, continue to follow the platforms, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we're on TikTok too. If you're on TikTok, we're on TikTok. Um, but continue to show love and we're going to keep this thing going. Keep it rolling. It's been a great start to 2022. Um, and we're, like I said, continue to get bigger and better as we go. Um, and this week, my microphone is fully working. So look, hey, I'm, I'm trying to bring you guys my best. Best here is the standard. Um, yeah, all to say, look, episode 19 here at the Players Club, the podcast by the players for the people. I'm your host, Darren Richard. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for your support. And we'll see you next week. Peace.